Welcome to the Clay Lab Network Podcast. Here your hosts may range from myself, JP, to a pro shooter or coach. Through this collaborative podcast, I'm going to bring you the insights from different shooters, coaches, manufacturers, and other industry leaders in the Clay Target world. Be sure to follow us on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform. This podcast is brought to you by Fioki USA, Greenwood Custom Stocks, Coal Fine Guns and Gunsmithing, Westside Sporting Grounds, RE Ranger, Fennel Shooting School, Electronic Hearing Protection, and Castellani USA. Without further ado, let's get into it. Mike, it's good to be here, buddy. Folks, we're here at Rocky Creek Sporting Clays. Clay Labs here. Get to talk to my buddy Mike about all things Creek Off. We talk a little bit about the company, about the products, the people in the company that make the company what it is, the people that made it what it was in the beginning, and uh, it's a hell of a story. Now, and the cool guns. Cool Best guns. guns Rocky going. Creek, new, the newest Creek Off dealer, I believe. Yep. About Selling year ago. everything you can get in stock. Yep. Everything we get in stock, we're just trying to get more in stock. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's hunting for the best, and it's the best. So, yeah. um, you know, I was with another company for most of my career. Uh, came over to Creek Golf for various reasons about almost 10 years ago now. I tell you, it's it's like it's like nothing else because some of the other companies build great guns, but as an instructor, instruct too. Um, I just, I gotta have, be able to tell my student that whatever gun they get, they can get fixed. Right. Because they all break. Yeah. Man, I've broken them in lessons, everything from Fabrice and Holland and Hollands to, uh, you know, all of them. Yeah. They all break eventually. It's the company that not just stands behind them, but does it, what's important to us as competitors, quickly. Right. That's what. Turnaround time. Turnaround time. I had a student one time that, uh, that's one of my, a few times I like to talk about a Krieg off breaking, but it was the Sunday afternoon of the weekend before a state championship. And I'm trying to get this guy's confidence up and I'm just letting him pound targets. I'm not throwing anything really, really hard. I'm just wanting to sit ball targets. And he breaks targets. He breaks like 10 bad twos in a row. And I'm in my head, I'm like, okay, he's gonna break that last one and that's it. We're gonna, we're gonna close the lesson down. He's gonna go off on a high. Yep. And he turned around, I was like, yeah, man, good shot, good shot. He's smiling and he opens that gun and his holes go flying out. And so does one of the ejectors. Oh. Flies right out of the gun, break yep. it right off. Yeah. And his look on his face was just just totally crestfallen. Mm-hmm. Like, well, there goes my state championship I've been preparing for for months. I've been getting ready for the state championship and now my gun's busted. Yeah. The next morning we called the mothership. We called KI in Pennsylvania. Told, I told them what was going on. They said, if he'll overnight it up here, we'll turn it around the day it gets here and overnight it back. There you go. Done. Can't beat that. Cannot beat that. And the guy, you know, got his gun back on Wednesday and was ready to go for the state championship. Yeah. The kind of service that that family at Kriegoff provides is unlike really anything else in the biz that I can find. Yeah, I agree. Well, a funny part, I didn't know this, and don't quote me on how many employees, but I was with Alex uh, Deal, who is the CEO of the company, Mm -hmm. and we're talking to guys like, well, why should I buy this gun? We're at the U.S. Open in Arizona and, and this and that. He's asking all these questions, and Alex goes, service. And the guy said, what kind of service do you provide? Alex goes, 52% of our company are gunsmiths. Right there, that should tell you. Absolutely. 52%. So more than half of the employees are gunsmith. And they're, I don't even call them gunsmiths. I call them masters at their craft. Absolutely. Uh, they can fix anything. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, re-weld the barrels. You know, there's people that come in. They, Man, I got this gun from 1997. And it's been shot. And it's popping open. Well, top lever spring. They go, no, the ears on the barrel, have they're wore out. And next thing you know, they just redo the ears and you got a brand new gun so that's what i like like i said the service of the company is bar to none um and anything i ever need or you need or whoever calls us we can pretty much get turned around for somebody quick pretty damn quick yeah i don't i can't really you know and i mean and they're at all the major shoots that's right other what other company don't want to name any other names but there are no other companies that at all the major shoots have factory certified gunsmiths with all the parts there to take care of your needs and it's that commitment to their customers yep this is a competition gun company yep and competitors need 
service Johnny on the spot, something breaks, they got to get it fixed. And, um, and not just the broken stuff, but the ongoing preventative maintenance type service, the exactly. annual service. The annual. You get an annual done once a year, knock on wood, you just don't really have a lot of problems. I travel to shoot with one gun. Me too. Right. Yeah, I travel international all over the world, carry right. one gun. It's very rare. And yeah. people tell that I had a, a customer the other day, he just had a gold super scroll and he got a custom stock and he's all pumped. He shot it. He's oh man, this thing's nice, Mike. He just doesn't kick anymore. Everything's good. And he goes, you know, um, even he goes last year, he goes, Mike, I went to all these major shoots and I never carried a backup. Don't feel like I could do that with many other guns. And like you said, they're gonna everything's gonna break. Everything's the vehicle, cool. um, but yeah, he's never had it. He's cloud nine because you know, he's like confident, and I think that gives you peace of mind. Absolutely. When your equipment runs, you know. Absolutely, and they're built. You know, they're built super durable to start with. That yep. receiver is just, you know, it's one of the things that makes the gun handle the way I like because it's a massive receiver in the middle. So you got a lot of weight in the middle of the gun where yep. it doesn't upset the balance, but it soaks up the recoil, gives you the durability. Yep. Um, they tell us there's Craig Oswood documented million rounds. I'm still running out there. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, you hear people say, "Oh, this is a million round gun." This is a, people are like, "Well, Mike, how long will this Craig off last?" I said, "Longer me and you." That's like, right. Shoot it. Your, you know, your kids will find out. Maybe your kids will find out. We'll rebuild it. I mean, we can pretty much rebuild, you know, everything on that gun. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anybody come in and go, "I've wore that gun out," you know, and it's made for that high volume type of shooting. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And you know, one of the things that I I love about Krieg Golf so much it's the parkour model which is you know a little bit different configuration but with that parkour the lighter barrels flat rib it kind of opened Craig off up to a kind of another segment of the market to, to people that wanted a gun with a different set of handling dimensions so now they got the high rib pro sport yep it's a little forward bias you feel like you're really pushing that gun to the bird but it, you don't you feel like it ain't gonna quit moving on you well exactly and then you got the sporter with with the flatter lower rib but that same feel. nose feel yep. and now the parkour and parkour x to split the difference yep so it's it, uh, just by building that one receiver, but changing the components on both ends of it. Well, it changed the company. Yeah, right? absolutely. We, we went from, and we were talking about this uh, uh, the other day, like when I was at Nemecal and, you know, uh, I used to get guns in there consigned to me to just help them move product. It might, you know, get some in there. And um, like I said, one gun back then, Sporter, and good luck consigning the gun today, right? We, we're just rolling them out, and I really, truly believe that, like you said, Will, that's giving people options now. We've got parkour for guys that maybe shoot really like a thin, narrow rib gun. And then that guy who kind of likes a high rib, we didn't have that before, and he can shoot that with his head up and a heavier gun. And then you got the X. In the middle, guy really likes the sporter, but says it's too heavy. And then the parkour is too light. And he meets it in the middle. It's so we've got the whole game it's covered. Locks. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's like, you know, yeah, well, we can kind of put a gun in everybody's hand. Yeah. And think about the, some of our other brands out there. Good luck getting a small gauge barrel for it. Right. Yep. You know, we got you can, like on my parkour there, I've got 12, 20, and 28 barrels for the thing. So yep. I can shoot small gauge feet test events. Yep. Or I can go dove hunting. Exactly. You know? <laughs> right. So a lot um, of guys buy barrels, Will, for me just to dove hunt. Absolutely. They love it. They're like, I just I love my gun, gauge. but yep. I don't want to blow them up. Right. 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 Um, 100%. Upland hunting. I get guys, I've had several guys call, hey, Mike, uh, I just want to add a 28 gauge parkour barrel. I go, you going to shoot some feet tests or some small gauge events? I go, no birds upland birds yeah. and they now they just want to take their gun out there and they don't want to destroy that bird they want to just shoot it with a 28 love it um now we offer them with choke tubes yeah so they can shoot you know shooting quail or quail shoot, and you know, skeet choke you know yeah. Yeah. so they're not wolf you know send the bird to you know yes yeah. past Pre time pretenderize yeah exactly uh, so uh yeah you know and it's a um it's a very different company to work to work for shoot for than let's just say my previous experience is such a small family company yeah. you know you started i started betty and dieter Sorry. you know day to day in the office and everything has kind of evolved as they've yep. gotten towards retirement age um you know alex deal he's at the helm and he he runs yeah. that ship man he runs the ship and and he's 
got a good handle on it. It's pretty impressive what they do, how small they are. People think like, they, well, Creek off, Creek off. They think, and then like they go just to Ottsville and they're like, so it's pretty neat in there. You know, they got a place where you can shoot the gun on the pattern board and, you know, the workshop and you know where they you know do barrel work bluing work then the top of the office for the back of the house stuff the accounting stuff like that and then a showroom and, and they like for you to come by and they want for you yeah come on in you yeah. know they want to show it off i was there a month ago um and there was people just coming in you know checking yeah. it out and there's like this is neat but when you first go there it's like this is really cool but wow i thought it'd be like you know 300,000 square foot building, no. This, this is no. not a large company. Not a large company, and, and we don't really produce. One of the things that made me really happy, it's a, a lot of these guns now are machined, and Dieter won't go that way. As long mm -hmm. as he's like, if I'm alive, this is what I built. He's happy, so he's we're gonna do proud this. of it. Yeah. And he's gonna do it with craftsmanship. Yeah. He's not gonna be that, and he goes, when I, my time to go, it's up to Phil, you know, but he goes, this is what I'm going to do because yeah. he's really proud of it. Um, it's kind of cool to watch him evolve over the years. The K32, I get guys that bring in an old K32 and they're like, oh, is this even shootable? And I'm like, yeah, man, we could turn it into a K80. What do you mean? I said, the only difference is you will not have a hardened receiver. You're not going to shoot enough to make that matter. So we update the trigger, give it all the K80 updates, and some guys buy a barrel. Yeah. And they got a gun and... They got know. memories from when they used right. shooting 40, 50 years ago. Right. I, I've seen a lot of guys in that mm -hmm. age, you know, that older age bracket that have got their dream crown grade K32 or something. Exactly. And it was an old skeet gun. Yep, yep, that's Most right. likely, maybe a trap gun. Yep. And we just pull those barrels off, put them some parkour barrels on. That's right. Lighter for, an, for 100%. a guy in his 70s. Yep. New stock on the back, upgrade yep. the trigger. Yep. You got a beautiful gun. Beautiful gun. I hunted. I'm just like, I wanted to, like, the history of Kriegov intrigued me. So I personally wanted a K32. <laughs> and uh, this one would come in, and that one would come in. Um, <laughs> matter of fact, I'm at Big Red Oak, and a uh, guy in front of the squad, Joe Olin, I talked to him. He used to come to the Gator Cups, and he's like, Mike, I love your targets. I said, Well, at least somebody does, right? <laughs> and he's like, he was, We were talking about it, and I said, Man, I looked down, I said, That's beautiful k32 i said that's not 28 inch barrels he goes no it's 32 inch legit so we take them out measure them the barrel before everything matched it had the old cherry wood i call yeah, it yeah. it was an original k32. It, was like, it looked like red paint on them damn right yeah, yeah, it was not good. we, we <laughs> it was came one a way to make way all the wood, wood. we just paint it you know <laughs> yeah we came a long way with our wood and i go i said you ever want to sell that call me no, I don't know. Well, he calls me and he goes, Mike, I'm, I'm going to get rid of it. I want to give you first, you know, chance on it. I bought it just because it was the gun I always wanted. It was 32 inch old trap barrel for doubles. Um, but now I've got it and I'm just, I'm going to keep it. I'm probably not going to shoot it, but I have a piece of history. Like, sure. I can show somebody one day, Hey, check this out. Gotta this, put it on display in here. That's right. We should. Yeah. Now, this is how the gun evolved. Check this trigger, check this wood. And then you put it in somebody like, you know, your gun right there. They go, what? And you can see how it evolved like you do with an old car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's pretty neat to see how they, and they're always trying to get better. I mean, they are just, uh, but the funny part is you take that K80 frame. Now it's the same. It's like Novocaine. Give it time. It'll work. You know what I mean? It, it works <laughs> right. I mean, it works. So we don't have to change anything in the, in, in the action. Mm -hmm. no. We felt no need. Yep. Little updates in the forearm, like you were talking about, and uh, stuff like that. But she and, they, and they provide the service to keep it all going. Yep, it's, it's unbelievable. Yep. And our buddy Ken Fowl up there is getting everything organized and marketing all rolling. And Ken's the man. Ken's a good man. Yep. He is, uh, he's on it. They put in a new internal system to just, you know, how they allocate the guns and everything like that. Ken kind of found one and kind of was the you know, leader of putting that together. I don't know anything about it, but I know we, Ken was We just it. take what they send us. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, don't, I don't get into that. I was like, I can barely use Excel spreadsheet. I'm not, I'm not getting into that system, you know. Um, yeah, so they do that. Ken, uh, one of my, you know, all-time favorites up there because the joke is a couple of them raised me right since i started going up there is janine 
Snyder, she's the, uh, I mean, she is the shop. Mm -hmm. I mean, she can get it done. And like, she'll get up and say, Mike, it's Wednesday morning. You haven't called me yet. Everything good? I'm like, that's a good day. She said, well, I expect my Wednesday morning call, but Janine's like on it. She's been there. I remember, so I remember when it was, um, at one time it was Betty, Dieter, Braxton, and Janine. That was it. Right, and she's been with them that long, and it's kind of funny. Like that's her shop, and mm -hmm. she leads it, and she's phenomenal at it. And I'm like, Oof, Janine, how do you get all those things done? She's like, three computer screens, you know, ripping it. And she's like, Well, it's easy, man. Been doing it forever. You know, but she watched it grow. Yeah. Um, she's watched people start, and I can literally call Janine and be like, Janine, I got a gun here. Uh, that I've never even thought about seeing. She's give me a serial number. Like, she's like, yep, made 1992. Like she knows, doesn't even have to really look it up. So that's how far she goes back with the company, you know, and um, kind of that shop with Janine's kind of leadership that goes into the gunsmiths that are phenomenal. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They're, they're, they're awesome. I mean, I can't name anybody. I, I called them with questions on other brands. Hey man, I got a member at Rocky Creek. I'm just trying to help them out. You know me. I said I'm the salesman, not the fixer, right? And then you know Matt or Andy or Jeremy, one of them will laugh. Here's what you want to do: have them try this. Oh man, I got the gun open. I wouldn't have known, you know. So they know they're pretty amazing of what they build. I mean, they build their own stocks for their oh, yeah. personal shooting. Like from the start, it's like they can't. It's not like they just they can do it all on a gun. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, I needed a barrel one time that I needed <clears throat> the fixed chokes open to light modified, light modified, and right the there patterns there. were unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yep. Matt That's does That's our those. boy Matt, yeah. Matt does this, right? Matt yeah. does all that. Um, the funny part is I've got Matt in here on FaceTime one day. Mikey, yeah, Matt. Just ship it to me. I'll get it right back to you. Stop it's trying easy, to do that. It's easier to say. Yeah, it's like, oh, you've got me worried, man. I'm like, and then I'm like, don't tell Alex. I'm working on it, you know? <laughs> but but a lot of things, actually, little things, they help me that mm -hmm. we can do. And, you know, I've showed Quigley. It's like we can do in-house. Now, little stuff that, you know, with Matt and Andy and those yeah. guys show me. And I'm always trying to, you know, I know, I'm, I know my place, right? I'm never going to be a, a craftsman on that. But little things um, they've showed me that I can do now without sending it off. And mm -hmm. it really helps a customer. I like to say that customer service, if that gun breaks, I can at least make it, you know, get get through or absolutely figure that out. That's kind of the shop. And then uh, you go into, you know, Chrissy, uh, Jen, Chrissy's kind of, you know, in sales. She kind of helps the dealers and allocate and then she's a machine. And then um, like a back of the house hero is Jen. Or she, if you need shirts, hats, oh, gear, yeah. she gets it to you oh, and yeah. she's on it. Um, I mean, I've literally ordered stuff and like, don't even hear anything next day it's here. I'm like, what? I'm like Mike, Jen's on it, you know? So that, that's people you're dealing with. So I think that's what, Betty and Dieter and Braxton and the start, they, they trickled down that to the... They trained it the way they wanted it to be done. That's right. Here's where we're going to be. And, and then they, like I said, handed the reins over to Alex and um, they just go. They're small. I tell people, I said, you know, like the other day, um, Madison Sharp called me and she was getting a custom stock made and she just had some questions. And well, Janine was sick. You know, Alex was out and I go, I can't get you an answer yet. That's how small they are. It's not like there's 10 people. You call up uh, Verizon and you but got- this time of year, they're off at trade shows. <laughs> right. Like SCI coming up. The whole, right. Damn near the whole crowd will be- So their crowd's going. Yeah. I mean, this year at the Nationals, first, uh, uh, Janine was there. I was pumped because she's never been there. And you know, I had my daughter there and my, and my wife deals with Janine a lot on the phone. So they got to hang out. So that was nice. But I'm like, whoa, why do we got Janine? She goes, well, we had another show. We had World Skeet. We had this. So she had to be there, come out of the shop to work the show. But what's neat, they've got kind of people that can do a little bit of everything. Absolutely. And, and cover somebody that's sick. And COVID taught us a lot of things, right? Taught us production and especially in foreign countries. So they've kind of worked around it. To and, and even Craig off Germany, not a huge company. Small. I mean, I mean, it's big. Don't get me wrong. Right, I mean, right, it's a, it's a real, right, real right, company, right. but it's it, it isn't General Motors. Scheme, you know, it's <laughs> small. 
um, total. I don't want to know. I want to say it was 80 something. Yeah. Total. When I went there, I had a question about how the parkour barrels were soldered together. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay. So we go down in the dungeon and, you know, in the, like yep. the basement. That's right. And I met the dude. The guy that does <laughs> the, the, the dude. Right, you know, right. The one guy. The one guy, yeah. Phil took me down there and introduced me. Mm -hmm. Go back and forth German and English. And yep. he starts handing me stuff and showing yep. me how, you know, and he was, he had an apprentice working under him. That's right. Learning, right. Learning. They have a tire apprentice program. It's awesome. Ten years. Awesome. Yep. Going through that part of the tour was about as interesting as anything you did. Oh, I bet. I mean, I'm there one day, and it's funny. Years ago, funny story, I, I dropped. I was in my garage, freezing cold, so I live down south now. And I dropped my barrel. And I mean, I just bloop. And I had my chokes out. And it just literally bent my barrel. And I'm all nervous. And Alex, calm down. Come up here. Luckily, then I only live two hours away. Get up here. Come see Matt. Like get in there and they literally have a old school machine uh, that just straightens barrels. And it's visual. It's all vision and feel, right? Mm -hmm. And Matt's like looking and he's, you know, first he opens up show you get, and he go shoot it. And I get down there, poof, dead on. I went from like about to have an aneurysm to Love Matt. Love you, Matt. <laughs> Love you, Matt. I, I want to take you to lunch? <laughs> you know, like, okay, what, good. what beer do you drink? I'm on your side, right? So that amazed me, that thing, and it's crazy. So, like, uh, David, you know, being in the machine mm -hmm. tool business, like, David went to a factory tour last year just to see because he had to go over there for machines in Germany. They have a big customer in Germany. Well, I'm going to make over to the fact and he was just intrigued because David's got these robo drills and these like you know big time CNC machines that can like spit out a choke in 10 seconds so kind of machine and then he sees the old school German stuff he's like wow but it works but it's like wow you gotta have a guy to run it like you can't just go bloop bloop like David's like this you type type the machine does the work this is no whatever they do so that's amazing and that's kind of what's getting harder in the game though, where mm -hmm. machines have kind of taken over a lot of these companies uh, because they can't find the workforce. They don't. And that's why Krigoff has to have the apprentice program so they can have make the their yeah. people. That's right, they have to make their people. They have to create the person. Um, and this is one thing I encourage these, uh, you know, I tell everybody college isn't for everybody, right? And. Um, you know, you got plumbers and you got carpenters and we need gunsmiths, right? These craftsmen, be, be a gunsmith. They're not a guy that just puts together an AR. Okay. YouTube, you can do that. All right. We need craftsmen, right? Like, our, you know, even some of, you know, the Tim Wards and Matt's a rich Cole, these Jim really, Green Woods, right? Jim Green Woods, the craftsmen, they aren't there anymore. And I got to tell you, I, I am not a craftsman, right? Uh, but if I was a young kid and I really wasn't interested in, you know, college or working behind a desk or something, you could paint your own picture as a gunsmith, a, a true gunsmith. I mean, I encourage it to these kids. I'm like, you love shooting? You know, like, a, you know, Mike Sherman, I said, you can work really hard and then you can go shoot a shoot on a Saturday and you can do the work when you get home. So you can stay in the game, meet people and make a phenomenal living at it. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. We need, uh, you know, you look at other things, I tell everybody, well, gas stations are a diamond dozen, right? Walmarts are a diamond dozen. Who's going to go fix Will Fennell's gun today? <laughs> You'd only let a few people touch your gun. Well, man, if we had something that really, you could kill it. Um, yeah. You could really make a great living and kind of be your own boss. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Or work for a company like Craig. Right. Or get for a big company that is going to, you're a craftsman. You're not just a, you know, I'm going to put an upper and a lower on my AR. You're building a gun. Fitting things. Fitting. You can blue. You can do stock work, inletting, uh, trigger work. Mm -hmm. Now you're, you're worth something, you know. Absolutely. And I tell people all the time, they come for a job. I'm like, hey, the more you know, the more I can. You know, we got a couple. We got a couple going down that road. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm actually really happy about that. Absolutely. I'm trying to get them in to say, hey, guys, I'm selling these things. You got to fix them. 
<laughs> you somebody, know what somebody I mean? gotta do it. And they they're loving it. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. we got the bright you know, we got a few that are their your future's bright. They mm -hmm. stay with it and just I tell everybody, I said, you start you're you're not gonna be, you know, a mat right out of the gate. But nobody is in anything. Just work your way up. Yeah. And then you learn more and more and more. Now you've created something that nobody else can do. So now they gotta come pay you. That's right. right? They gotta right. come to you. you yeah. Anybody yeah. can work on an AR and yeah. stuff like that. And then the team. We got a pretty cool team. Got a cool team, yep. You're the team manager for Sporting Clays. We're just manager. talking about Sporting Clays here today. That whole trap and skeet thing, yeah. it's a little confusing. Yes. So tell us about the team. Team, so now we're into 2024. Um, team's neat, so kind of start with the ladies division. Probably the most dominant ladies division out there. Uh, you know, you got Madison Sharp, you've got Shelby Moon, and Karen Miles. Uh, and if you look at the shoots, <laughs> you're going to find their name somewhere up there. And then, you know, Rihanna Franz was a couple years ago at the top with them. Now she's in vet school, but still on our team. Cause she'll be back. She'll be back. And uh, I mean, right there, if you look at the shoots, you're probably going to find those names every time, like, right, just look up and they'll be there. Women's team, I don't think there's a better ladies team out there. Mm -mm. I could be wrong, right? But they're just dominant and they win and they represent the product well. Uh, and they, they love the brand. They all, it was funny, I called Karen and Shelby and Madison the other day to talk to them about some stuff and they were telling me how much they love their gun. Well, that's what I like to see, right? That means they're happy. Like they're not saying, oh, I never get, my, my gun's broken down again. I don't, I don't get those calls, right? I do not get those calls. And if we do, we get it fixed quick. And then this year, so Will's kind of been our, you know, veteran slash Olga. open guy. Olga. Olga, I'm just being nice. You know, he's a little gray now. He's, I'm not saying much. I'm getting there, Will, so I'm, I'm out. Um, now, uh, now Mike Wilgus. Mr. Wilgus is there. Mr. Wilgus is getting older. He's punched up the veteran. Mm -hmm, he's punched <laughs> up the veteran. They, and it amazes me because I remember like when I was a kid, I thought Wilgus was like a young, cool dude, you know, and I'm like, you're 55, Mike? The other day when I talked to Alice, he's Mike Wilgus is 55? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, we didn't really know. Huh? So that means you're aging well, Mike. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of our, like I said, older guys. And you'd look at, uh, you know, Will and Mike and Bill McGuire and Wayne doing on that's wicked that's evil oh, oh yeah guy. That, that veteran uh, class is like getting, another master class. yeah it's just yep. like to walk in the park yep absolutely and then on the um juniors we, we junior, got turner junior junior basically turner represents us as a junior upcoming shot really well last year he won you know North Carolina State shoot, South Carolina, he won our in-state and shot well in almost every event. Team Did USA. Did well in Europe. Yep, did well in Europe. Ben his barrel. <laughs> we can't let him get around trash cans. But that's where you see, Turner dented his barrel. There you go. And as soon as he got back, they Six. fixed it like that. Like he came in here like the week after his gum was here. Um, and then, you know, on the men's side, uh, Gibbon Miles has been shooting one for, I think that 2008 he told me mm -hmm. the other day when I talked to him. So Gibbon's been shooting one for a while. Yourself? Um, myself, Braxton Oliver. Great year last year. Shoots parkour. Like he, he shot great. I mean, he had a phenomenal year. Um, my joke with Braxton the other day when we chatted, I said, man, if Brandon wasn't alive, you'd have won like seven shoots, <laughs> you know, because they shot off like five times. Um, and then we've added Joe Pynchon. Joe Pynchon. Fan favorite. You know, Joe's just a good kid. He's always shot a K-80. I remember when he was like that tall, that wide. Sorry, Joe. He didn't mess and he shot a little uh, pro sporter and he's just whipping this thing around. He was a trap shooter. Mm-hmm. Came out for the Young Guns program, and then, you know, Joe, that ain't gonna, ain't gonna work for this, buddy, for you. And we got him in a parkour, and uh, we picked him up. He's kind of earned it uh, mm -hmm. over the years, and always shot the brand. Super nice, took the job at Covey Rise. He's kind of their director of shooting sports, and he'll be a good one for us. And then uh, the other major ad this year was Brandon. Yeah. That was the last yeah, alien. You know, uh, national champion, captain of Team USA, 
all American points, and he's always shot a Craig off. Shot a Craig off for damn near forever. Forever, right? So, so we added Brandon, and that was kind of the major thing so far this year. That's kind of the team um, for sporting. And then we have some different levels, like some upcoming shooters um, that we're looking at. But then we have some other shooters that are kind of getting better, and we start them on a, you know, kind of starting them out on a different level, and then they kind of earn up. Just like we did with Joe Pinch. I said, hey, Joe, we're going to start you here, and you're going to have a way to earn up yeah. on the team. We have different levels. We have our pro staff and then our team. Um, and it just kind of comes with, you know, the years and what you do. And so I got a question for you, Will. You yeah, answer it. And this is my favorite question for Will Fett. I'll tell you why. When I was a kid, before I tell the question, a gentleman, I won't mention any names, he came up to me and I'm, I'm just starting, I'm like 15, shooting pretty well and I'm trying to learn the game and the ins and out. Comes up to me and he goes, Mike, I don't care if you win 100 world championships, if you're going to do anything and, and want to be a sponsored shooter, what you need to be a, a shooter that represents the product great and he told me he's like do you know will fennel i said oh yeah i've seen him you know in the magazine he said we well, represent Seminole, and he's telling me all the people you represent at that time he goes that man knows how to represent a product he goes be will when you're in products and he starts telling me all the examples of and this man owns a gun company now right so he starts telling me all the examples about well i said man that makes sense well it stuck with me and it gave me great success because i've kind of so I think it's a great question, Will. You got young shooters, young students, or even older students. They want to get sponsored. What What would you say? What's the best advice for somebody to get sponsored? And yeah, tell them you know, about that on the good way. A couple things to keep in mind. Sponsorship's got to be two ways. Yep. You got to provide actually more, right, back to the company. Yep. You know, you got to figure out how to be a value to the company. And I, I tell that. juniors and stuff. I said, man, you love Krieg off, or you love. Yep. Bretta or you love whatever, hang out at their booth, volunteer to run, go get coffee. There you go. Yep. Help clean up in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Wipe the guns down. Yep. Prove that you want to know about the guns. Yep. Go back there, hang out with the gunsmiths. Right. Do whatever it takes, but make yourself valuable. Right. Next thing you know, you're going to get a hat and a t-shirt. Right, right, right. Next thing you know, you know, they might fix your gun for free. Next thing you know, you might get a gun. I, I had a junior student who's now, <laughs> makes me feel old. Getting old. Um, getting old. <laughs> this was a long time ago. He loved the company I was sponsored by then. Yep. My brother. Yep. <clears throat> loved it. Just say, Will, I want to be sponsored one day. So I said, right. dude, just camp out in the Breda building at the Nationals. And everywhere they set up that you're at, you can't, when you're not shooting, you camp out there. You ask questions, you help yep. customers, you run, go get coffee, you clean up the mess. Within a few months, he could recite the Beretta catalog. There you go. He got a job right out of college working for Beretta. There you go. See that? Yep. So, yep. and you know, the rest is history. For that guy, he's in the industry now. Yep. So make yourself valuable, find things you believe in, patronize them, you know, um, if you if you just love Kriegoff or you just love Beretta and that's what you want, right. so when somebody comes by and, and says, "Hey, kid, I'll give you this Turkish-made semi-auto," think long and hard about whether you take that. Exactly. Be true to the stuff you really, really like. Yep. Uh, and I'm not saying I've never changed brands, but I have never done it lightly, and it's usually been because a company went out of business <laughs> or right. you know the right. major life change that brought me to creek off yep. so be a value to the sponsors and then they'll take notice of you it's not all about your shooting records right. certainly that helps now i just always encourage people um when creek off is set up at the u.s open or yep. the nationals or you know don't feel like you, it's a private club no you know just because you shoot a different brand gun come hang out yeah come see us Talk to us a little bit. 100%. You know, go demo a gun maybe. Yeah. You might right. find out that. There's yeah, try one. That's try the best one. time You're, to try yeah. one. We, <clears throat> we have every configuration, every stock, every barrel. Come by, try one. You know, you might have, you know, you know, somebody like Will or it doesn't matter, Gibbon, whoever. Hey, uh, 
I watched, you know, you on, you know, this. How do you approach this target? And those guys are going to talk to you, right? And they, well, why does Will shoot a parkour and Mike shoots a sporter? Well, we'll tell you why. It's yeah. kind of feel, and then you can kind of get more educated on the yeah. gun. And then just, like I said, we're easy. We want to see everybody. Absolutely. A lot of us are friends, and we all shoot different brands. We all drive different cars. But just good to see your peers out there and Absolutely. hang out. Um, and and we're, a, we're a lot of places for you to catch up with us, too. I mean, God, Craig off sponsors, how many, I mean, all the majors, oh, just I mean, about one fashion or another. If you take, like, just last year, like, basically every regional, okay, they, Craig off is big in uh, uh, Dieter, loves the FETAS events. Man of Will's heart. So, don't worry, they're getting me there. Uh, so, I actually been enjoying shooting the feet yeah. test lately. I'm loving it. So, basically, they sponsor World Feet Test. They always have that. Like this year, they had that Cree Golf Alien Layout, Mars yeah. Landing, right? Something neat. Um, and they do it at the you know K Cup at the Nationals. That's the largest 100 bird shoot in, in probably the world, right? Well, yeah, those people absolutely. shoot it. The regionals, they sponsor my South Carolina State last year because we were a big shoot. Uh, Georgia State, they were sponsored. They kind of support the industry very heavy. If you look, they do a gun for a Team USA raffle. That gun is not bought by anybody. It's donated by Krieg Golf. Absolutely. And every ticket sold, 100% of the proceeds go to Team to USA team. Yep. to help and out. greatly appreciated. Yep. Uh, Pennsylvania State, well, the uh, trap shoot, they give them a gun. They call it the Handicap Krieg Golf Day from the, you know, and they give away, it's for ski. They, they do a lot for all shooting sports, clay target industry in general. I mean, I hate to know what they sponsor every year a lot. So they're giving back to absolutely sport big time, especially for a company the size. Right, like well, it's a very small. Like you know, other companies are huge. We are small, but um, Dieter loves the game. Built his guns through basically all three disciplines, and uh, you know, just gives back. Absolutely happy to give back. Another thing, Will, to touch base about, nobody has talked about this, but we do have a full ladies line now. Absolutely. Right? We've got the Victoria uh, in every gauge. Every uh, It's very popular in small gauge, 12 gauge as well. Um, I sold quite a few of them mm -hmm. last year. And it's funny, I, I gave a couple lessons Monday down at Parsons Creek. and. Uh, two different female students had victorious. It was pretty cool. These little 20, they're not trying to win a world championship, but they love their K80. I love my gun, Mike. You know, their Southern charm, and they just like to shoot them. Yep. And it's really good gun for them. I mean, they shortened up the grip, the stock, a little higher. Ladies tend to have longer necks. Bitch. bitch, right. It's built for a lady shooter. And there's a whole group out there that uh, loves to shoot, has no desire to compete. And then some of them want to compete. And you some know? of them want to compete. But they want a nice gun. Absolutely. And they want to shoot it. It's always more fun to look good. And they shoot a couple days a week, so they yeah. need a gun that's going to take the beating. They just, you know, are shooting at their little hometown or different clubs. And, yeah, we have a full and, ladies line. That's, and then Creek Off certainly knows how to make them look good, too. The custom right. engravings are just. Yeah. I mean, I think that, uh, I'll say this over and over, I look at a lot of guns, and it's hard to beat that Kriegoff engraving. All our different engravers uh, that we sub out, we have in-house engravers. Um, I was talking to Alex, and a guy just retired, and Alex was like, man, I didn't want this guy to retire. I'm like, what's wrong? He could knock out a super scroll like no other. Like, his signature pattern was a super scroll. And then the other in-house engraving, like, say, they were more better, like, on the kind of bird scenes. They all have their kind of niche, uh, just, you know, female engravers. Yeah. Some of my favorite Krieg off patterns are done by a female engraver. Phenomenal. Yep. So we've got some awesome And then engraving. there's the ability to have them custom engraved. It's a process. Yep. As awesome. it should, you know, as it naturally should be, because it yep. takes a while, but, yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're kind of on the line. They might say, we need X amount of hours to engrave this gun. Well, they might already have 10 guns ahead of you that take X amount of hours, and they're not going to take away from precision. You know, I promise you they're, they're going to do it right. Um, and then I'll give you an example that uh, who we know very well, Will, a local guy, Bill Wallace, 
couple of years ago now, about two years ago, he gets a, buys a brand new parkour X barrel and he goes, Mike, I swear it's shooting high. Well, me and Will know Bill. We're the, he went over to me, went over to Will. We all tested everything. Said, hey, we couldn't get peace of mind with it. I said, Bill, you can just go to KI. Went up to Creek Golf. He gets down there with Mike and Alex personally comes down and he goes, Bill, I agree with you, that gun. Now it's a two-year-old barrel. And Alex goes, I agree with you. It's not shooting where you should shoot where your eye is on the stock. Game a new barrel. Two years old. Because I say, I want to make it right. And he goes, you know, you know those guys. And except me and Will kind of went for, hey, this guy, good guy, he's a good competitor. He's, and he wanted, he, he bought a nice gun. And they yeah. were going to make sure it was shooting right. And they did. They No questions asked. They, uh. Now, I'm not saying everybody, your gun's shooting high. That might be a technical, but this one like was legit bench rest after that tested. He drove there and they spent a few hours with him down in the basement over yeah. one guy that bought a standard grade gun two years ago. That's yeah. pretty good. Pretty strong. Most companies are like, well, why didn't you tell us this when you bought it? But no, they took care of them. And there's several situations they have over mm -hmm. the years with people that we've sent them. Lots of good stuff, man. Lots of good stuff. It's going to be a hell of a year this year. It's going to be a great year. Yep. Lot well, cool. Enjoyed it, man. You got it. Enjoyed it. It's going to be a good season. Lots yes, of stuff sir. going on in Rocky Creek. Lots of stuff going on yep. in the country. It's all going to be good. It's busy. It's a good busy. thing for the shooting sport. Absolutely. We're growing. And that's what we want to see, growth. Yep. All right. Take care, guys.